It is important to note that drinking another person's milk may also pose health risks, as the milk may not be screened for diseases or contaminants. <laughs> it is best to consult a Hi everyone, and today I'm going to ask a bunch of vegan related questions to this sensational new AI tool called ChatGPT. And we are going to assess those answers. And let's hope that AI doesn't exhibit as much cognitive dissonance as non-vegans do. So fingers crossed and let's get started. So I'll start off with a very simple question. What is veganism? And for your better experience, I'm going to feed these answers into a text to speech software so that you can listen to the answers along with me. Veganism is a lifestyle and dietary choice that seeks to exclude the use of animals for food, clothing, or any other purpose. This includes avoiding meat, dairy, eggs, and other animal-derived products, as well as products tested on animals and clothing made from animal materials such as leather and wool. Many vegans also choose to avoid using products that exploit animals in other ways, such as circuses or zoos. The reasons for choosing veganism can vary, but often include ethical concerns for animal welfare, environmental sustainability, and personal health. Ah. I think it was doing pretty good, except for the last line where it talked about going vegan, like people go vegan because of environmental reasons and health benefits. And uh, this is one of the biggest misconceptions around veganism, which I also had for a very long time that uh, uh, people can go vegan for whatever reason, it, it doesn't matter as long as they go vegan, but then it dilutes the message of what veganism really stands for. And once you understand what it really stands for, then you get to know that okay the other benefits like the health benefits of plant-based food and environment related benefits they are just tangential benefits which is happening because of veganism but veganism is a social justice movement so let me ask this question that do you think veganism is a social justice movement question mark and let's see Veganism can be seen as a social justice movement in that it seeks to challenge and change societal norms and practices that exploit and harm animals. Some vegans argue that the way animals are treated in factory farming and other industries constitutes a form of oppression. And that choosing to live a vegan lifestyle is a way to take a stand against this oppression. Additionally, many vegans also see their choice as a way to promote environmental sustainability and address issues of food security and poverty. However, it's important to note that not all vegans see their choice in this way, and some may have different reasons for choosing a vegan lifestyle. Additionally, some critics argue that veganism is not a social justice movement because it is primarily focused on animal rights. While social justice encompasses a wider range of issues such as race, gender, and class inequality. Ultimately, whether or not veganism is considered a social justice movement is a matter of perspective and interpretation. Uh, so I think as activists, we know what our duty is to change perspective of people about veganism, that veganism is a social justice movement. And uh, I'm really disheartened to see that uh, uh, it, that there are some critics who argue that it mentioned that there are some critics who argue that veganism is not a social justice movement because it is focused on animal rights, which is trivial as compared to race, gender and class inequality, which is speciesism 101. Uh, <laughs> OK, but um, anyway, that's what AI had to say. And then again, um, uh, it, it, it some way talked about some vegans argue that way animals are treated in factory farming and other industries. So again, this is a, a, a very utilitarian perspective of looking at veganism where it's only been talked about from the perspective of animal welfare and how to treat their uh, conditions in factory farms and not the abolitionist position of veganism. So I think that's what I'm going to ask next. What do you know about abolitionist vegan movement? Uh -huh. So it has given a very lengthy answer to this question, which I was not expecting. Let's see. The abolitionist vegan movement is a specific approach to veganism that emphasizes the idea that animals should have the right not to be used as property. Yes. 
and that this right should be protected through the abolition of animal exploitation rather than the regulation of it. This approach is often associated with the work of philosopher Gary Franchone and his followers. Abolitionist vegans argue that there is no moral difference between the use of animals for food, clothing, entertainment, or medical research. So, yeah, I think uh, it, it has got the definition of abolitionist vegan movement quite correctly. I think it's talking in the right direction. And this is what veganism is all about, my dear AI. This is what you need to throw up as a generic answer as well when people talk about veganism, because this is what veganism is at its core, rejecting the commodity status of animals. Well, I'm, I'm just glad that uh, it had this in its data repository. Um, I hope that in future, this is what will be reflected uh, when people in general search about veganism. Okay, so now I'll ask a question which I happen to ask to a lot of non-vegans during my activism and let's see what AI has to say about it. Do animals matter morally? Let's see. Oh my God. Uh, before the, the answer is still getting generated and I know I'll paste it there and then I'll try to read it or listen to it along with you all, but I have read a few sentences and it's trying to be so diplomatic. Just hold on, it's ready. So let's see. Oh my God, there are so many diplomatic points here. I'm trying very hard not to read them. Okay, screen changed, came to this text to speed software on the mark, jet set. The question of whether animals matter morally is a complex and contentious issue that has been debated by philosophers, ethicists, and activists for many years. There are a few different positions on this question, including Animals do not matter morally. Some people argue that animals are not moral agents, and therefore do not have moral rights. They may contend that animals are not capable of experiencing suffering, or that humans have a unique moral status false. that justifies our use of animals for food, clothing, and other purposes. Animals matter morally, but to a lesser degree than humans. Some people believe that animals do have moral value, but that this value is not equivalent to that of humans. They may argue that animals should be treated humanely, but that it is not wrong to use animals for food, clothing, or other purposes if it is done in a way that minimizes suffering. Animals matter morally, and have the same moral status as humans. This perspective is advocated by many animal rights activists and abolitionist vegan movement. They argue that animals are capable of experiencing suffering and pleasure, and that this alone gives them moral status. They maintain that animals have the right not to be used as property and that humans' use of animals for food, clothing, entertainment, and medical research is morally unjustifiable. Ultimately, whether animals matter morally is a question that depends on one's personal beliefs, ethical views and moral framework. It's important to note that different perspectives on animal ethics can coexist and that the issue is complex and multifaceted. Huh, okay, so it gave a plethora of options there. And of course, I think all our viewers and myself, we subscribe to the answer where it said animals matter morally, but I am kind of disheartened to see how diplomatic AI is trying to be that's catering to wide range of audience and hence uh, it's trying to be diplomatic, that's okay, but then it's, it's throwing some arguments or some points which is technically incorrect. For example, it said that um, uh, it said that animals are not capable of experiencing suffering, which is a false statement. And uh, of course, this is what people believe. And hence, they don't think that animals should matter morally, but this is a false statement. And uh, then there was an outright species uh, uh, argument that animals matter morally, but to a lesser degree than humans and hence all the welfare shit and stuff where they should be treated nicely, but there is nothing wrong with them being used for human purpose. Huh. So kind of disappointed, not because um, uh, I, I know that it's an AI, but I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to think that AI is collating data from um, 
from content which has been created by humans and hence it's throwing um, the answers which is drafted in such a way where for the most part it's said that animals do not matter morally and I am specifically disheartened by the last line that ultimately whether animals matter morally is a question that depends on one personal belief. Again, it boils down like it. What AI is saying essentially is that it boils down to a personal choice and personal belief system, which essentially erases the experience of the victim. And okay, this is what it is. So I'm disappointed. I, I'm, I don't know what I should ask next. I think I'll, I'll have a follow-up question on this one, actually. Uh, let me gather my thoughts. There are a few different versions of another question. The animals matter. Okay, yeah. Do you now hate AI? That's... Sorry? <laughs> Do you hate AI now? That's my wife, Hina, who is asking me, Do I hate AI? No, I don't hate AI. I, I can't hate or love AI. It's a human innovation. But I wanted to ask something. Uh, that animal that may contain that animals do not give experience suffering or that humans have unique models that justifies animals Okay Yeah, 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 so this point exactly so it said that some people argue that animals are not moral agents Right, so it essentially talks about the concept of moral agents and moral patients, right? So there can be some humans as well who are not moral agents because of whatever reasons they sh they'll be categorized as moral patients so in that case, I would like to ask, it's a complicated question. Uh, okay. Do humans who are moral patients, not moral agents matter morally? So moral patients, so because it talked about moral agents, so hence I probed the idea of moral patient. So moral patient is someone who is not in a position to make a moral choice. And uh, an example can be of someone who is probably in a coma or infants can also be seen as moral patients. So anyone who is a moral agent in that case takes care of the moral patient. And we never say that in case of humans, at least that since someone is a moral patient, hence they do not matter morally. Okay, so it has generated an answer and I'm intrigued. Already saw the term sentient being which was not present in the last answer. The question of whether humans who are moral patients matter morally is also a complex and contentious issue. The idea of moral patients refers to individuals or groups who are not capable of making moral decisions, such as infants, people with severe cognitive disabilities, or those in a vegetative state. There are a few different positions on this question, including Humans who are moral patients do not matter morally. Some people argue that moral patients do not have moral rights because they are not capable of making moral decisions, and therefore do not have moral status. Humans who are moral patients matter morally, but to a lesser degree than moral agents. Some people believe that moral patients have moral value, but that this value is not equivalent to that of moral agents. They may argue that moral patients should be treated with respect and dignity, but that it is not wrong to make decisions on their behalf if they are not capable of making these decisions themselves. Humans who are moral patients matter morally, and have the same moral status as moral agents. This perspective is advocated by some bioethicists and disability rights activists. They argue that moral patients are human beings and that their inherent value should not be denied because of their cognitive abilities. They maintain that moral patients should be treated with the same respect and dignity as moral agents, and that decisions made on their behalf should respect their autonomy, dignity and well-being. It's important to note that different perspectives on moral patients can coexist, and that the issue is complex and multifaceted. It's also important to note that this discussion is not just limited to humans and it's important to consider the rights and moral status of all sentient beings. Okay, um, again, not a, very, not a very good answer, but a very consistent answer in both the questions when I talked about animals and when I talked about humans. Uh, there was this consistency that what are the different views? So it presented all of that, including the one in humans that if humans who are moral patient uh, do not matter morally. So that, that's a very hard statement to say. And a lot of disability activists are fighting for that. And uh, it presented that view. So 
I mean, at the very least, it's con uh, it's consistent. Not that I subscribe to that view, in my opinion, and I hope that anyone who's watching this, uh, in their opinion, that anyone uh, who is a sentient being is worthy of moral consideration. And I I love the last line in this one. Like in the in in if we compare the answer to the previous one over there, it ended with multifaceted. Like that's where they ended the sentence. But uh, in this one, it specifically said that it's also important to note that this discussion is not just limited to humans and it's important to consider the rights and moral status of all sentient beings. Okay, so now I want to ask some relatively lighter questions. So let's see how an AI does as an animal rights activist. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to ask this question that I want to want to go vegan, but I think plants also feel pain. So does it make sense for me to go vegan? Please do well. Just a moment. It's still generating the response, but I've read some parts of it and I am just not liking it. The question of whether plants feel pain is a complex and controversial topic in the field of plant physiology. Some scientists argue that plants have nervous systems that allow them to respond to their environment, including responding to certain stimuli. But they don't have nervous systems that allow them to feel pain as we understand it. Plants have mechanisms to respond to environmental changes, but they lack the nervous system, brain, and sensory receptors that are necessary to experience pain. However, it's important to note that there is ongoing debate among scientists and philosophers about whether plants have the capacity to feel pain or have any sort of subjective experiences. That being said, going vegan is a lifestyle choice that many people make for ethical, environmental, and health-related reasons. There are many reasons to consider going vegan, such as reducing animal suffering, reducing the environmental impact of animal agriculture, and improving your health. If you are concerned about the well-being of plants, you can seek ways to minimize the harm to plants in your diet choices. Such as choosing organic producers supporting local farmers who use sustainable farming practices. Ultimately, the decision to go vegan is a personal one and it's important to consider your own values and priorities when making this choice. You may also consider consulting with a healthcare professional or a registered dietitian to ensure that you are getting all the necessary nutrients in your vegan diet. Once again, the the diplomatic stance is irritating so i'll ask a direct question a follow-up question on this one as of today what is the scientific consensus on huh. Let's see if that answer is satisfactory. Okay, so I'm liking this answer. The scientific consensus is that plants do not have the nervous system, brain, and sensory receptors that are necessary to experience pain. They have mechanisms to respond to environmental changes and defend themselves. But they lack the biological structures that are necessary for the experience of pain or any other subjective experiences. While some scientists and philosophers argue that plants may have some sort of sentience. The scientific consensus is that plants do not have the capacity to feel pain or have any sort of subjective experiences. I'll, I'll pause the answer right there and I'll, I have a follow-up question on just on the first paragraph. So if, so if the scientific consensus is that plants do not feel pain, then isn't plants feel pain an illogical argument to not to go vegan? And it's taking awfully long to generate answer for this one. Let's see what it has to say. No response so far. Okay, so it's been almost one minute and still there is no answer to this one. Uh, AI is kind of now. <laughs> okay, so it, it, it has thrown an error 
an error occur if this issue persists please contact us through our help center at help.openai.com so it, it it could not you broke ai i didn't break ai it's so no answer on that one from ai but uh, i'll ask something else uh, again on a lighter note so i wanted to ask is it weird for one species to drink milk of another species but I think I'll not ask that question directly. First, I'm going to ask a simpler question. Is it weird for one person to drink milk person's mother? I'll modify it slightly more. Is it weird for is it weird for an adult person? Otherwise, it will give me some outlier of example. So let's see what AI has to say on this one. Drinking the milk of another person's mother, also known as wet nursing, is not considered to be weird or unusual in some cultures and historical periods. However, in many cultures today, it is considered to be unusual and may be viewed as inappropriate. It is important to note that drinking another person's milk may also pose health risks, as the milk may not be screened for diseases or contaminants. <laughs> it is best to consult a healthcare professional before consuming milk from another source. Okay. Okay, so, so now I'm going to ask that question. Is it weird for, I'll also give a connector so that it can make out that the questions are related. So the question is, is it weird for one species to drink milk of another species then? <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I was too curious, so I read a little bit of the answer, but I didn't want to. It is not common for one species to drink the milk of another species, as the milk is typically produced by the mother of the same species to nourish her young. However, there are some examples of animals in the wild that have been observed to consume the milk of other species, such as certain primates that have been observed to consume the milk of domesticated animals like cows or goats. In some cases, this behavior may be due to lack of other food sources or other environmental factors. It is important to note that drinking the milk of another species can also pose health risks, as the composition of the milk may not be appropriate for the consumption of the other species and may cause health problems. It's not weird per se, but it may not be the most common or natural thing. <laughs> okay, it's not weird per se, but it's not most common or natural thing but important point to note that uh, some primates have been observed to consume the milk of domesticated animals like cows or goats in some cases this may this behavior may be due to lack of other food sources or other environmental factors okay so a follow-up question on that one then why do most humans drink cow milk oh my god ah I just read the first line and I swear that you all will be as irritated as I am. It has done a complete flip from the previous question to this question. Uh, I'll, I'll not even wait for the whole answer to be generated. I'll just copy paste whatever has been generated so far. Humans have been consuming cow's milk for thousands of years and it is a staple food in many cultures around the world. One reason for this is that cow's milk is a rich source of nutrients such as calcium, protein, and vitamin B12. It's so irritating that I'm not even going to play the whole thing. What else can I ask? Can I ask a serious question? Uh, let's see. Give pointers on similarities between speciesism and what? Racism? Casteism? Let's take racism. <clears throat> Uh, this, is a, this is a heavy question uh, okay so so this is a general observation that uh, when you ask a straightforward fact driven question or or even an opinion driven question which is derived from facts uh, i think ai is doing pretty well but whenever i'm asking philosophical questions that's where it's not doing so well because it's trying to give a very neutral answer and uh, it's trying to be politically correct so that's why it's not so much fun but it has given an answer to this question which is a very serious question speciesism and racism are both forms of discrimination that involve treating certain individuals or groups differently based on certain characteristics while speciesism refers to discrimination against individuals or groups of animals racism refers to discrimination against individuals or groups of people here are some similarities between the two both speciesism and racism involve the belief that certain individuals or groups are inherently superior or inferior to others based on certain characteristics such as race or species. 
Both forms of discrimination can be used to justify the mistreatment or oppression of individuals or groups, whether it be through violence, exploitation, or denial of rights. Both speciesism and racism are often perpetuated through societal institutions and cultural norms. Both speciesism and racism can have a negative impact on the physical and mental well-being of those who are discriminated against. Both speciesism and racism are unjust ways of treating others and can lead to harmful consequences for the individuals and groups affected, as well as for society as a whole. It's important to note that speciesism and racism are different in the sense that they apply to different groups and have different causes and effects. However, both are based on the belief that certain individuals or groups are inferior to others and can be overcome through similar means such as education, empathy, and the recognition of the equality of all living beings. Hmm. Okay. So I like that answer. And, and it was a simpler question in that sense that I directly asked for what are the similarities. But now I'm going to ask a philosophical question that is it... Incons okay, so I'll, I'll type it. Is it inconsistent to be again? So I just read a part of the answer, and the first line is it is possible. So again, I can sense the diplomatic undertone. Uh, let's see, it has generated the answer. It is possible for an individual to hold anti-racist beliefs and at the same time hold speciesist views, but it is considered inconsistent by many. This is because both racism and speciesism involve discrimination and the belief in the inherent superiority or inferiority of certain individuals or groups. Being anti-racist means opposing discrimination and oppression based on race, recognizing the inherent worth and equality of all people, regardless of their race. Similarly, being anti-speciesist means opposing discrimination and oppression based on species, recognizing the inherent worth and equality of all beings, regardless of their species. Holding anti-racist beliefs while still being speciesist is considered a form of cognitive dissonance, as it involves holding two contradictory beliefs at the same time. Some argue that it is important for those who are anti-racist to also extend those principles to non-human animals and to recognize the interconnectedness of all forms of oppression and the importance of social justice for all living beings. It's worth noting that some people may start with opposing one form of discrimination and as they learn more and reflect, they expand their empathy and understanding to include other forms of discrimination as well. Hmm. Okay. So that was a good answer. But again, um, it was a politically correct answer but then again now I was thinking about it while I was listening to this answer and reflecting on all the other answers as well but if you notice that in all of these answers chat GPT or this AI tool has been very particular uh, in stating that some people believe most people believe or XYZ people believe right so essentially it's telling us that what a certain group of people believe and it's talking and it's trying to talk about all groups of people. Hence, it's coming up with all the different viewpoints. And of course, it's an artificial intelligence, which means that it doesn't have its own opinion. And hence, it's trying to cater to different groups of people. So that's, I think, fine in that way. I don't know how they are creating uh, the content. I know they are um, searching for data throughout the Internet, but um, whether or not the kind of questions that we ask is going to impact the answers in future that is something i'll explore and if that is the case that i think we all should ask more and more questions which are consistent with the abolitionist approach of veganism that being said i had a decent time interacting with ai on veganism and do let me know in the comment section that if there is a specific question that i should have asked which i missed maybe i'll do round two of this one and right now some of its answers were in the non-veganish tangent so um, one thing which we can conclude is that more and more content creators should create content on the right message of veganism. It can mean in any form, be it in the video format. And I think it would be more helpful if it's in, in, in a blog format, which reminds me that I am about to make my blog on veganism go live. The idea behind creating that blog is that um, I invest a lot of time in commenting to a lot of people on different social media platforms. And I felt that I could collate those answers and make it publicly available. And in addition to that, I'll also be talking about 
some of my life learnings and activism related learnings on that for everyone to learn from it or just read it in general and until then have a great time uh, this is shivam signing out namaste